Hey guys, glad you stopped back by the shop. I'm Corey, this is Mad Rat Garage. And this week, we're working on Project Moz Mad. I learned something new about Tri-5 Chevys I didn't know. And I've been around Tri-5 Chevys my entire life. That 55 Chevy Nomad that we were working on that my brother bought now used to be my dad's and he owned that before I was born. Been in the family the whole time. This has been around since I was 11, 13 years old, right in that ballpark. I don't remember when. It's too long ago. I'm getting old. Been to a lot of Tri-5 meets, a lot of Tri-5 car shows, you name it, over the years. Worked on a couple. Dad's had several. And when we got to doing the brakes on this, I learned something new. Um, this particular car, this 56 Nomad, had factory power drum brakes. Um, they didn't call it a booster, they call it a treadle valve, but it basically acts like a booster, vacuum booster, for the power brakes, and a single, what we lovingly call the suicide master cylinder, because if the line goes, one line goes bad, all your brakes go. At least a, um, a dual master, you got two front, two back, if one goes, you still got brakes somewhere else. So we're updating to modern booster, we're updating to a dual master cylinder, and in the process, learn something new. Um, let me get to it. Comment down below. If you're a Tri-5 person and you're aware that this was there, cool. Comment down, down below. Let me know. I, I, I want to know if I'm the only one who didn't realize they had this particular setup. It's actually kind of cool. I mean, this is the way back in the day they solved problems. And uh, again, I like automotive archaeology, so I like digging into this stuff, just seeing how things are different than today's stuff. I like seeing how things were different just 10 years apart you know just from a 56 chevy to a 66 chevy there was massive jumps in technology not like today i mean a massive jump in technology today is now you got a big ass screen on your dash versus a small one um and a few other things but uh back then they were figuring it out it's pretty cool so glad you stopped by comment down below uh let's check it out Tell me what you think. Project Moz Mad, converting to the new master and booster. Let's get after it. Well, here's an interesting situation. Got the factory power brakes, but this is the pedal that goes up there. And normally behind that would be the rod for your booster instead it's on a jack shaft got it loose out there's why it's rattling but I haven't seen this before is that a difference between a 55 and a 56 because on my brothers it was normal right to the pedal this doesn't look this don't look like a factory weld. Um, and that looks like it was cut out with a hand cut out to weld that piece on. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you're a 55, 56, 57 guy. Because uh, the jack shaft thing is... I can't really get up in there that well. I'm too fat to be in here. But anyways, I'm sure this will be something aggravating again. <laughs> Hot rodding. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. All right. Let me get after this. I can't film this and do it at the same time. All right. little investigation. And uh, the reason for that jack shaft on the pedal underneath there, this is for future guys' references, is the power steering booster. If this had manual brakes, no power steering, there's actually a hole for it behind here. But if you were to put the booster and all that on, the generator's in the way. And if you see on the back of this generator, there's a shaft. This was also a power steering car at one time and the power steering pump ran off that shaft here. There was no room to put power brakes. So they put the jack shaft in, moved it over to here, 
and then the booster could come out here and ride next to the generator. So everything would be in this area and not running into the power steering pump. Very interesting. And yes, the power steering had been removed a long time ago on this. Um, it went bad and was unavailable at the time. My dad just took it out and went to manual. It has what I showed you before with the, the hydraulic piston that actually moves everything, which prematurely wore this out. I'm gonna end up converting this to alternator and probably putting a, um, whatchamacallit, a power steering gearbox in and uh, the power steering pump will run off of the motor mount. We'll have a power steering pump bracket. So that's all down the road. First things first, I got to figure out. So I think I got to take this whole plate off because this is welded to this. Either that or I figure out a way to drill the holes I need to mount everything onto that. I got to do a little research, but they get 150 bucks for that plate. Guys are looking for them, I guess, to make it into the what they call a treadle valve. Um, vacuum booster and that plates kind of sought after I don't know if I want to go into making a, my own because I still have to make that same plate and then cover that hole over there and then just leave that hole what I have seen is a couple of guys take this all off drill the spot welds for this to come off but if I don't need to if I can just drill a couple of holes into that I might be good to go so nothing's ever simple as sitting here thinking uh well i just put one in my dad's 55 nomad what's the difference right well non-power steering non-power brake car who knew that uh, everything ended up in a completely different location so i'm done for the night i spent an hour doing research a little over an hour and uh, I'm gonna think about it. But I wanna get that mounted before I put my uh, brake lines in. Because think about this, <laughs> it just dawned on me too. So those brake lines I got, and this kit that I got was for a manual brake setup. Which means the manual brake would have been here are those lines am i going to have enough room to stretch and bend those lines over to the proportioning valve which is now six to eight inches further to the side so i want to get the booster and uh figure the rest out i might have to make my own lines i guess or see if anybody carries them that was a factory power power brake kit Yeah, good times. So much for taking her to the car show. Won't make it now. That and, uh, let me turn you around. We're sitting on the ground. Steering wheel is dead center. And if you can see, the wheel's towed in. And the wheel's towed in. So I'm going to have to do a, just a basic down and dirty alignment and get those get those wheels straight this way because right now they're like this so the tie rod ends got to get tightened up pull them in both sides and I'll get it close that way um, I can at least drive it to the alignment shop and don't have an issue and don't wreck these tires so we'll get everything else dealt with hopefully we won't run into any other craziness I'll figure it out always do all right guys till tomorrow the next day all right guys so i got all the bolts out of this i gotta see what's behind it this for you guys that are doing this yourselves or working on a 56 not sure what other years i haven't checked my brother's 55 to see if uh his has the provisions to have been this way or not his was a manual brake car this is a threaded uh, block that sits behind this bolt and the bolt behind this access. It sits like that. When I took that out, it was no problem. 
When I started doing this one, it spun. But I was able to get my finger through the hole and hold it so it wasn't all gummed up and then fished it out through the hole. Then uh, over here, these four had a nut on them, which is the same place that the manual would go. And then it had four threaded bolts and through one of them, I can kind of tell, I think it goes through to the firewall, it goes through the firewall into the jack shaft that's off that brake pedal. We're gonna climb in there next and find out. But uh, I kind of got it broke loose. Oh no shit. There's our panel. Don't know if I'm gonna need that again or not. So, well, I tell you what. There's a factory hole, is there? I was I was wondering. This is what I didn't know, and I couldn't tell from underneath. This is the hole that the, the the factory power brakes came through. They moved everything over with that jack shaft. This is where the manual would have been. And that manual would have sat right here. Single suicide booster or brake master. Now, if you put a booster on that, it would have sat about here. This is where that power steering pump goes. This is why they moved everything over, so that everything would clear over here. It's good to know that the factory hole is still there. I can really, I can just hook up to that. Looks like the car was green at one time. Factory green. Huh. I like the blue better. Anyways, but I see threads behind the firewall here. I wonder if the jack shaft, there was that weird thing I said looked like homemade crappy white, uh, homemade and crappy welding. I wonder if that those bolts were also holding that on. We'll see if that's loosened up underneath there. If I can take that all apart, oh, sure enough, I can see the regular uh, brake pedal, the cotter pin. Okay, so I should be able to run right through here. Not a special pedal. Maybe the jack shaft just comes off. Well, if that's the case, I don't need that plate. I'll just need a plug for the hole here. And I can run it here. I wish I could run it here. Just for the fact that this is a nice place to have that. Still be able to change plugs and stuff. But uh it's all gonna sit here, it's all gonna sit there. Fine. Interesting. Put it on there, nothing's changed on that, right? On there. A few moments later. Hey guys, I can see better how this works. Hold it. So, this bar right here, this is my brake pedal up and down. This bar connects to that jack shaft. Did my jack shaft come loose? It did. So, those bolts on the outside, those four bolts I was saying, those are the jack shaft bolts right there. I need to get to this. On the other side, sure. Yep. Oh, it's all out. All right. So I will hold these, this cotter pin. A hard time seeing the screen. If I got you on center here, I think that's, yeah. Pull this and uh, pop that out. And then this whole jack shaft should come out. As you can see. It's all flopping underneath there. Oh, there's two bolts here, two bolts on the other side. Interesting. I kind of like the jack shaft idea, but it's not going to work for our needs. So, I am converting this to an alternator. I just wasn't planning on doing it this time around. Just wanted to get the brakes working and everything running and get it back on the road. So I'm gonna hook up the master and the booster, make sure I got enough room between here and there. And if everything's clearance wise is good, then uh, we're just gonna install it and I'll take care of this later. Because this still works. Um, it just doesn't work at idle. I don't know if that's normal or not. Generator light comes on at idle, which doesn't seem normal to me, but since you take off, the generator light goes out. And the charging at like 13.7, 13.8. But I'd rather put it internally regulated and then I can get rid of all of this garbage here. 
That one looked good. That don't look good. Now I gotta find a alternator. I think I got one here somewhere. Meanwhile, well, guys, we're back at it here. Uh, another day, another dollar. Didn't get to that pedal after our last little session, so today, need the boost stick. Uh, under the dash we go, as you can see. Very well. <laughs> see we can get this cotter pin and pin pulled out. We can get this master cylinder put in. I don't know if I can do this two hand, one handed. Okay, everybody. Let's see what I'm doing. It's doing. There we go. So, gotta take the back one out too. Because it looks like these both these studs are welded to a plate. Just like this on the back side. Ta-da! I know, I know. Really should, really should treat this girl with more respect. And you might be right. My problem is, and I've mentioned it before, this paint job has to be stripped down to the bare metal to get repainted because of what it is. In old school, single stage, it uh, will continue to dry out crack peel chip whatever no matter what you put over the top of it it will react to the paint that goes on top of it i could tear it down and let somebody blast it definitely something i could do the blasting is going to be several thousand dollars and now you're down to complete bare metal having to go paint every nook and cranny and door jam and inside of fenders and doors and the whole bit back up a cheap paint job is going to be 10 grand plus the somewhat metal work which i'd probably do the metal work but i mean to do this right and do it the justice it needs for just a good driver quality driver 15 20 grand if i want it really nice you know i know you can brag about it a little bit 25 30 grand i ain't got that kind of money i like patina i will eventually get this cleaned and respectable not going to be perfect i don't do perfect What's happening is the two top bolts, these two, are running into the bulkhead bolts that are holding the new bracket on. Yeah, yeah. It's actually leaving about as much room as what's not threaded there before I can get it all the way tight. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off probably a nut's worth on these two. Buy something. You ready to alter and fabricate and change everything you buy to make it work if you like your hot rod. These are the stuff you do for their love. <laughs> half the distance of that hole. Hitting it right dead center. What I'm going to do is take that pin, put it up against the jam nut. Mark a little more than two thirds. I think what I'll do, i put that jam nut there. That's the distance we got to go. What I just said was that's going to be too far out. It's, it's going to be marginal. So, I'm going to do, I am going to cut this thing flush. I marked, I don't want to have to unthread this all the way out, being it's flipping. I can see my, I can see my mark, I don't know if you can.
Alright, hopefully this is the last time. Line up. Let me a stick out. Now it's in. That's in two thirds of the way. Got to get it to this one. And it's just tight enough that it's sitting cockeyed and I can't get it over. So we're going to use a screwdriver to try to pry it over. But I can't do that with two hands. So we done it there and pry it forward. A few moments later. Hey, small victories. Hey. What a pain in the ass, guys. Always is, though. Not, not my first. Not even my second. That's the third one I've done on this channel. I don't know how I got stuck doing disc brake conversions here in the last year, two years. Done one in my life and ended up doing three more. And the first one I did was nowhere near as difficult as any of these. That being said, they're not difficult, guys. This is just. They're just fiddly. Um, yeah, I said fiddly. I don't know if the Willwood stuff would be any easier to use. I don't know if any of the expensive name brand stuff is any easier. I know that stuff is pretty good when you're upgrading your disc brakes and you've got factory disc brakes, you're upgrading to the Willwood and all that stuff. Um, Doing the aftermarket chassis, they kind of use Willwood, so everything bolts on, everything's simple, everything's easy. Don't know on these Tri Fives. Uh, this was a weird one. Um, my brother and I had I haven't really talked to my dad about it, but I'm going to mention it to him if he knew anything about how these factory disc. Excuse me factory power brakes if they actually uh if he knew that they actually used that jack shaft and moved them it was never even brought up in uh the description when i bought the kit it wasn't too hard converting it just figuring it out you know uh it's funny the information online they talk about modifying that plate and leaving it in the same spot I think that would have been a lot more work. And you're destroying that plate. I'm going to clean that plate up and, and uh, paint it. And I'm going to... Uh, and I'm going to put the whole master booster and the jack shaft pedal. Uh, get a price for it all. Because there's guys that do restorations back to complete stock. That may be looking for those parts. I'll... Uh, I'll put it together and they'll have a cord or a rebuildable core. Um, it might have been fine. I don't know. I didn't look inside the front brakes at all. Um, I didn't really pay much attention. I, I kind of looked when we took them apart, but I didn't really look because I knew I was replacing them anyways. But uh, them, them front seals might have been, wheel cylinders might have been leaking. That might have been why I went to the floor. I don't know. There was no mess on the tires. There was no mess anywhere really that was wet to indicate that but when I pulled the brake hoses off the brake lines in the front the hard lines from the soft lines nothing really came out so yeah guys I don't know if uh, I don't know if that's a sign that there was a leak not much was coming out there. Might have been a leak somewhere. 
hopefully we don't find it somewhere else put this all together and somewhere from the because the only thing that's going to be original now is from the hard line from front here to the back and uh, the rear hose which is pretty new and the rear brake cylinder which i left alone because they were, they were dry as a bone all that division dry as a bone both sides didn't even have a look of greasy residue and those are the ones i thought were leaking I already replaced the front passenger one that went bad um, six years ago. We go bad again. Today's crap, all dry rot. I use AC Delco, and, and I tell you what, that AC Delco stuff nowadays, they're rubbers, garbage. Probably made in Mexico or China with very low quality rubber parts. So, yeah, anyways. I'm going to finish bolting that on. I'm going to bolt the master on. Um, play around with that a little bit and we'll figure it out. Alright guys, let's get back after it. I was going to bench bleed this. But I don't bench bleed my masters when I am doing a complete revamp. Which, what I mean by that is it's getting all new lines and new calipers it's a ton of air already in there um but you're gonna have to get out and i vacuum bleed my stuff so what i do is I fill this up get everything hooked up crack the bleeders on the front crack the bleeders but i pump them and you'll get the air out into the lines and then fill it, pump them. And when I see fluid starting to come to the bleeders in the front, I vacuum bleed the whole system. And that's gonna pull any air, it's gonna pull any air in here because you're sucking down out through. Um, and then I pump them one last time to do my final bleed. Um, I have not had great luck with the vacuum bleeder giving me a good pedal. The vacuum bleeder gets all the air out, but I think holding, having somebody hold pressure on that pedal and then you're just going <laughs> until they're at the floor, being under pressure like that, that last bit of air gets out. That's just my two cents. I might have to paint this thing. Oh, I'm not a fan of that bare metal, <laughs> that crappy galvanized looking bare metal. <laughs> What do you guys think? Oh, and I got a chrome cap. And I, I got to decide too, am I painting that black? Because if I'm painting that black, I'm also painting that black. I have to think about it. All right, guys. Did a little sandblasting and then threw some paint on it. Just to give you a different look of what this is all out of the car. This is the jack shaft and the plate. So this is what was under the dash. And you can see where my finger is. That's where they relocated the push rod to that goes out to the master. The master would be bolted to this piece. And this is on the firewall side, inside the engine compartment, this whole plate. And then this is that bar I was showing you that it just holds this top piece in. Just a couple of bolts. And this is on the inside, and then paint that. Forgot about it until later. These are the four holes that the manual master would have normally been bolted to, but that holds on this. And then here's where the firewall's in between here. This is where the jack shaft bolts on. And there and there. And then this, this is going to our pedal and the whole time I was thinking it was a different pedal and everything but uh, yeah just a jack shaft nothing special um, as I said before the pins are welded to the bar on the one side so any of you dealing with these it's not just a pin and a pin it's this whole piece is one pin goes through the pedal and the jack shaft all in one shot kind of cool like I said I get a kick out of 
how the heck, why the heck they do stuff, but back in the day, but that was a solution to a problem they had. Cleaned up nice. I'll probably throw this on eBay for uh, somebody looking to restore or maybe uh, convert theirs to the factory type. We'll see if anybody's looking for that because uh, I haven't seen it for sale as a repop. Probably because most people just go ahead and update to modern. But there are the purists and this might be what something they're looking for. So, yeah, there it is, guys. Thought maybe to get a kick out of that scene are all done. So, all right. Pretty cool. Jack shaft to convert from manual single pot master to power single pot master. Moving the pedal. Steering column went between it. Pretty cool. Well, what'd you think of that jack shaft situation? Pretty interesting. How many of you guys out there have seen that before? In the different make, different model? I was unaware that they did that in the Tri Fives. Seems to me that uh, that that would have been something I would have noticed. Huh. Definitely interesting, but that's hot rodding. It definitely slowed down the progress of getting that master and that booster in, uh, having to stop, figure out what that was all about, finding a solution to it. That's why we like hot rodding, though. I like finding weird and odd things, and uh, as frustrating as it can be sometimes. It's kind of cool to uh, be able to find a solution to a problem that presents itself that uh, you didn't know existed. So, very cool. Next time, be going ahead and, and buttoning up, cleaning up this engine compartment. Probably going to do some custom painting on some, uh, some parts underneath there. Switching this from the generator to an internally regulated alternator and uh, rewiring all that. So... And I uh, really do appreciate y'all coming by the shop. I know I've got a lot to learn and to make this channel grow. I've got a long ways to go to get better at what we're doing here. But I can do that better with your help. And I am asking for your help. Comment down below how I can improve these videos. How I can improve myself in these videos. Constructive criticism friendly advice is always welcome uh, but we're all in the same hot rod and brotherhood so be nice about it uh, this isn't personal and hopefully with your help we can build a hot rod community and this channel can be part of that so thanks again for stopping by and don't forget don't wait for your hot rod to be perfect to enjoy it do a little something to make it safe and reliable get out and enjoy it. get motivated for the next thing you need to do get it in the shop do that next small project Get it out and enjoy it. You lose motivation when it sits for 10 years and you're looking at it in the garage and a million pieces going, why did I even bother? All right, guys. Till the next video. We'll see you then. Keep wrenching.